I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Uh, we're welcoming with us now Gretchen Martindale. Welcome. Gretchen is Thank with you. the Alberta Elementary School District where she is their Teacher of the Year for 2014. Thank Congratulations. you very much. It's good to be here. Uh, well, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us you know, your, about your school, where you teach, and tell us what you teach. I, I have been teaching for 29 years. I've been at Alberta for 11 years. Um, I've taught most of the primary grades up through grade three, but most of my years have been in kindergarten, and that is where I am right now. So How long have you been in kindergarten teaching? Um, nine years at another school and seven or eight here. So. so tell us about your class. I have a class of anywhere from 20 to uh, 23 or 4 depending on the year and um, they're usually uh, often it's their very first school experience they have not 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 too many of them have been in preschool um, they are uh, come with excitement they come with fear and trepidation and so we have a, a variety of different needs and things as the children come and my first job is to make them feel safe and secure yeah. there at school. You're their first introduction to, uh, if they haven't gone to preschool, yeah. their first introduction to school. That's right. Now, is it a half day or full day? We are full day. Okay, so that's a big challenge too. Right. If you've gone from even a little bit of preschool of maybe three or four hours a day to a full day, they're probably really tired by the end. They are. We start the year, the first six weeks, where we go till one which really is a nice break in for the children. They still, by after lunch, they are wondering why they're not going home, but mm -hmm. they only have an hour or so. Then um, we have a fall break, and then after October 1st, they are there all day till 2.30 with the other children. So what's the big change when you see the students go from you know, that partial day to a full day? The first day they're tired, <laughs> um, but the first, the first week they're really tired and, you know, but they really do well and really the time is used this allows me at the end of the day to have a, a free choice centers in the shorter kindergartens it's really hard to fit in even play so by afternoon they're tired and I figured that's their time mm -hmm. to have a little free choice so they get free choice centers at the very end of the day and they look forward to that so I guess uh, in kindergarten free choice would be kind of like electives for older kids where you get to do something that's not completely regimented? Not completely yeah. regimented. So we have building areas. We even have a little playhouse still. Mm -hmm. We have Play-Doh out. Uh, we have learning centers as well, and some of them will choose that. They'll choose the writing center or the um, art center or the working with math manipulatives. Um, they build with blocks. And those are the kinds of things that are out at that time. So this, you know, we, we were starting with uh, the Common Core. Yes. So what kind of big changes do you foresee in, in how you are going to have to do things and also you know what the students what the expectations of them are as well it seems like expectations do keep rising but two years ago we um, changed our assessment and our report cards so we decided to go with the common core in kindergarten then because mm -hmm. it didn't um, change anything for the rest of the grades uh, and so we make our our report card based on common core already our our uh, assessment is all on the standards, Common Core standards, and the biggest changes I saw were in writing and math. So the children are expected to understand number even in a greater value, to be able to um, look at two and know how many more it takes to get to three with manipulatives, mm -hmm. to be able to break apart how many ways can I get to five, um, how many different ways, and s instead of just two plus three is five, you're actually teaching them to find different ways to get five with manipulatives. So It's the problem solving is what you're problem focusing solving. on. How, how do you see that? Because for kindergartners, it's, problem solving is not a skill that they have, a lot of them. I mean, they're, a lot of them are used to the parents doing things for them, so this is their first step in really figuring things out on their own. That how is how so do you do that? That is so true. So you model. We do an awful lot of modeling. We even think aloud. So we, we get in a little circle and get them around the carpet and we bring our blocks out and we do it together and then I call a few kids up to do it and help them as they're learning. So an awful lot of modeling in kindergarten teaching. And hopefully that carries over into their real problems. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, and helping. So while they're working, you're walking around constantly. You, you do not sit at your desk while you teach kindergarten. No. <laughs> so you're walking around and you're working with them as they're working with them. 
And you're also, at that introduction, at that early age, you're working on citizenship and all these other things, too. Very much yeah. so. Um, we do a lot with uh, character traits and even just feelings, how they talking about feeling happy and sad and mad and scared. And um, respond, our, our school standards are be respectful, be responsible, and be safe. And so we talk a lot about what being respectful is and how do, are we responsible. And so when there is a little problem, you say, was that respectful? They know right away, was that responsible? Mm -hmm. And you know, it really gives you a nice tie in to what they're expected to do and to our class rules. So you've been teaching for 29 years now. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of changes have you seen over the years? Uh, there have been a lot of changes. Our te technology would be a huge one. Um, just what, the, what we have available with the smart board, with interactive games, um, with, with the iPhone, iPad, um, these things are just amazing. The kids did not even know those things. And technology is always moving way ahead of faster than I can move, that's for sure. And, but, but we still, we use a lot of it. Um, they, so technology would be one way. The adjustment, I've seen the time come and go as phonics was a big thing and I was teaching when whole language became a big thing. Mm -hmm. And then we're back to, I feel like we have a really nice balance between whole language and phonics right now where we're teaching language components and we're teaching phonics. Um, and then there's, a change in culture. Our, our, our society has changed, so we, you, that comes into the school, how children come to school, what they expect from school. Mm -hmm. Those things have changed. How do you mean that? Um, I think children used to come probably a little bit more afraid, and the adult was the always the one you listened to. And it was a rare child that didn't. And now children don't always come expecting to follow, be part of the crowd to be told what to do. They sort of, you know, taken care of themselves and done what they wanted and now they have to sort of follow along with a group mm -hmm. and be part of a group and that takes learning and they do they do learn. And that's part of the citizenship it's there part too. Part of the isn't citizenship. It? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in all that time you've seen a lot of changes in, in curriculum and changes in the types of students as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now as you face the new year with the Common Core and you're dealing with the problem solving, do you think the problem solving part of it will kind of be like the dominant part of what you're going to be focusing I think that's on. a huge part of it yeah. because you realize that it's not just enough to recognize a three and count three, but to understand all the ways to get to three. So you, you just change. We're adding a new little thing, part of number, numeracy into mm -hmm. their thing. So have you always wanted, had you always wanted to be a teacher when you were? I had. I was one of the ones that you would say loved to play school when I was little. And I went, started college, planning to go to school, but I got married and had three children and I went back to school. So I, it, I went slowly. Um, I was teaching preschool and kept going to school and got my credential and BA, BA and credential in that order. In that order. Uh -huh. So did you have one teacher in your life that kind of inspired you? I did. I, I would say uh, Mrs. Renge, my sixth grade teacher. She was just one of those teachers that really made you feel like you could do whatever you set out to do. She was one, and then in high school, Mr. Ham, a, a English teacher, he was another one that just really helped, encouraged and made you feel like, wow, oh, I can do this. This is this is good. It seems like everybody has at least one teacher in their life that that they can look back and say that that person really made a contribution to them. Yes, I think that's true. Yeah. So. Um, what does it mean for you to be Teacher of the Year? Wow, I was I, I was um, humbled because we have I work with a lot of wonderful teachers. We have teachers that really give of themselves, and and so for the for my peers to choose me and and uh, that that meant a lot. Um, I love teaching. It's something I've loved. I, I you know poured myself into. And um, so, yes, it was a very, on, very big honor. Because it's it's humbling because you're representing a lot of really good you people. Are. A lot of good people. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that in Alberta they chose wisely. <laughs> Thank so you. So we're glad to have you with us. We've been speaking with Gretchen Martindale, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2014 for the Alberta Elementary School District. Thanks very much for joining us. And thank you.